so did you catch the eclipse? I did not. I was working. 99 years. You have to wait 99 more years for that particular eclipse. Okay. I, yeah. I, I want to say this. I was in Chicago and it was really overcast. And apparently if you had the glasses on, you could still kind of see it. But I was like, yeah. Mm. Weeks ago, I bought the glasses and I got the ones off of the photography thing that NASA said was okay. Because of course, Amazon, there was a little bit of a scandal that some of their glasses, mm. they had to do a recall. So, but I did not get my glasses off of there. I got them where I'm supposed to. And because you're a good person, I am a good you're person. A good, good person, Stacey. And I do my research. <laughs> oh my gosh! So I got the glasses. I went to work thinking I was probably going to watch it on my TV, though, on my computer, though, mm. just because I was like, you know, I'm at work. Blah blah blah. Yeah. So it's about time because I am paying attention to it on my computer, and mm-hmm. I'm like, I have my glasses with me, and there's like three of us in the office, a skeleton crew. And nobody else is going to go. So I walk out the door and I go out onto this this outside portion of our building. And mm-hmm. there's a lot of people there. They have their glasses and they're looking yep. up. And I'm like, okay, whatever. You know what? I'm going to do it. I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to look Stacey. up because do it. Do it. 99 years, Eric, I look up, coolest thing ever. Really? I'm so glad I did. I then turned around, walked back into my office, and I dragged all of my old coworkers out. And I said, we were going to share my glasses, but you are going to look up into the sky, and you are going to be a part of history. And everybody can, you know, thanked me for that. But I remember in 1969, my dad forcing me to watch the moon landing. Uh huh. And I still remember that to this day, and that was a heck of a long time ago. I was yeah. very young, too. Mm. But I remember it. And that was how I felt during the eclipse is that this is just, this is history. This is a once in a lifetime kind of gig. Take advantage of it. And I was very glad that I did. I know there was a lot of hype and some people felt like, nah, and some people were the exact opposite. Yeah. And I would never be one that chases it. There were some weathermen and meteorologists who were chasing it. I think that's absurd. Oh, I have friends who drove all the way down to North Carolina no. to be in the totality. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. But – I I did go out there. I did witness it, and I'm very happy that I did. Good. And I'm glad I had the good glasses to do it. Good. When the chaos of popular culture makes your brain hurt, you really need belief in the form of a transfusion of analysis and humor. It's time for a poperation. Join hosts Eric and Stacy as they dissect popular culture. One bloody organ at a time. It's just what the doctor ordered. This is Poperation. I'm Eric. I'm Stacy. And today we are talking about an actor who is one of my he, favorites. An actor's actor. He, one of really one of my very favorites. Comma, 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 chameleon. <laughs> he can do anything. He totally can. He can do absolutely anything. And he does it so effortlessly. That's that's the thing I mm-hmm. love mm-hmm. about Kevin Klein is that you never really see him working. working. Even nope. when he's working really hard, it just it's just so effortless. Which you know that's a good thing and a bad thing. That's a pro and a con and the con part of it is. The pro part of it is for the audience it's just delightful and you can relax and enjoy. Yeah. The con part is is you probably don't get recognized for the work that you do. Yeah. You probably don't get the awards that you deserve because people are like, and it wasn't hard. Okay, so Kevin Klein does have one Oscar. Do you know how many times he's been nominated for an Oscar? How many? Once. But Once. But that's wrong. That's crazy. That it's criminal. Crazy. I mean, it just kind of goes back to our whole thing about how awards are just so fucked up. They really are. You know, <laughs> because are, he should bullshit. have every award, although he recently did win a Tony Award. And I saw him. We're going to talk about that at okay, the end of the yeah. show. I saw this this play that he did. And he, oh, so anyway. But he does, he does, he does all of them. He does from drama, 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 drama. Yep. To just the most silliest, stupidest rom com, you know, yeah. fun, soap to, dish to crap. To completely yeah. like oddball comedy. I mean, oh, so there's yes. rom com, there's where he's Correct. charming and romantic, and, and you know, and then there's like he plays people who are just nuts. Yes. In both dramatic and yes. comic roles. And again, like that's that, those are the kinds of roles where you see people working. Mm-hmm. Like you see them working really hard to achieve these levels of energy, right. and it just, just falls just out there. of his mouth. He's so, oh, it's just so great. Yep. And you know what? Kind of sexy. Very much, which explains why he married somebody like a hundred years younger than he is. <laughs> okay, you have issues with that. I don't. I don't. I, I, Issue is not right. I'm just making an observation. Okay. I'm not judging it because he is a hot, yeah, hottie, yeah. But Phoebe Cates quite a bit younger than he. Okay. Quite a bit. And that's his wife. I'm going to say they've been married forever. 
When? 1989. Yeah. That's a long time, especially in Hollywood. That's yeah. a long time. Well, and, and I wonder, and again, no, not casting aspersions, no judgment no, no, here no, whatsoever. Not at all. She hasn't worked a whole lot since no, they got hasn't. married. And I get that might have been a personal choice. Mm-hmm. And my the story that I kind of tend to make up about that mm-hmm. is that being a a lister or even a B lister or, you know, being above the title in a lot of Hollywood films is not all it's cracked up to be. It probably did not make her as happy as she expected that it would. Well, and so she just kind of saw something else maybe just, she wanted to do. Just to go on a sidebar about Phoebe Cates career, if you recall, she was doing Gremlins. You know, she'd done Fast Time. I mean, the movies yeah. that she was being offered weren't the movies that Kevin Klein gets offered. You know, it, it wasn't the movies that Julia Roberts or Meryl Streep get offered. That's true. But she did do, like, after she was married, she did, so Drop Dead Fred, not a, not a like, yeah, with Rick it. Mayall. You know? I saw it. I mean, I didn't see it. But, I mean, she was above the title in that. Like, she was carrying that right. movie. And I mean, you know, and, and I'm... It's I, what we're going to call Sucked. <laughs> And that's and that may have a pro, that may be part of it too. Maybe is that, yeah, uh, and maybe he, her career wasn't that fulfilling yeah, because correct. she wasn't doing the kind of work yeah. she dreamed of. But whatever, I mean, you know, you the Lace? fact is, Lace is one of my most favorite miniseries ever. In the I world. never did, although oh I do. I'm, I'm very aware of I which was one of you when bitches. I was sixteen, Pagan. Were you pregnant when you were sixteen? <laughs> now, that's a quote. Here's the fun part okay, about this that. is turning into the Phoebe Cates. I know podcast. it is, and I apologize. <laughs> but she was told to do an international accent, and that I just. That was verbatim what she did. It wasn't great, but it was one of the most fun things. But that's what I'm saying is that's what she was doing, though. She was doing those TV movies of the week. And okay. I think, and my feeling is that she and Kevin fell in love, and she made a decision. She yeah. said, you know what? Your career is the one that's probably going to go further. And I'll, and maybe she did want to stay home and have kids. Yeah. I mean, that's there's nothing wrong in that. Yeah, so, yeah. So, so they have two kids. And they've been married the whole time. No yep. scandals, no nothing. Now, the whole family did work together on this movie called The Anniversary Party, which which was written and starring Alan Cumming and Jennifer Jason Lee. Um, There's a weirdo. And they... Talk about Jennifer Jason Lee. I'm and, not saying she's not a good actress. She's a brilliant actress, but she's odd. And and they and a cast of all of their friends, basically, they, they did this that. whole movie around this house in the Hollywood Hills. And Gwyneth Paltrow was in it. And Kevin Klein and Phoebe Cates played husband and wife. And their two actual kids played their kids. They like they oh, showed okay. up as the, as the married couple okay. who shows up to this party. And it all like spans like a 24-hour period and all kinds Are of hijinks ensue. No, I mean, they're oh. not. They're playing characters. Um, God, I hope not, because they were kind of <laughs> awful. Um, but but yeah, so so his son, actually, Owen Klein, has a couple of, of projects that are labeled so 2017. Owen's like in his 20s okay. now. And he's got a couple of projects that are that are noted 2017 in IMDb that aren't released yet. They're either in talks, okay. just been announced, or in post-production gotcha. or something. So we'll see. His daughter only does film projects that her family is in. So she just <laughs> seems to be somebody who is, you know, hey, if, if the family's doing a movie. Sure. So this, so they were both in this – she and Owen were both in this movie called The Squid and the Whale, which is actually a great movie. Owen had a big role, and I think that, that his daughter had a smaller part. They didn't play brother and sister in that. Mm-hmm. Um, but The Squid and the Whale is about two sons who are dealing with – their parents divorce and it's a period piece in the 70s it's actually really charming it's okay. a it's jeff daniels and laura linney are the parents and and it's, it's great okay. um but anyway back to kevin klein um as we are wont to do we mm-hmm. picked out a lot actually it was hard to trim this list down because the whole point of this is that he can do everything so we wanted to talk mm-hmm. about the breadth of work that he but even so there's there's movies that we didn't quite and, get to so we want to do a quick you, laundry list yeah and in this laundry list this this will tell you exactly when we say he does everything i mean he does he literally does yeah. So uh, his first um, big movie uh, was Sophie's Choice, which we'll get to. We're going to talk about that one. But right after that, he did The Pirates of Penzance, which was... You can't get more opposite of yeah. Sophie's <laughs> Choice than The Pirates of Penzance. And this was a, a film version of the uh, Lincoln Center uh, stage version that they did. It was Gilbert and Sullivan, but they kind of, they, they reinvigorated it with some interesting, and so Angela Lansbury is in this, and Rex Smith, and Linda Ronstadt. I mean, so so he, so he plays the Pirate King. Silverado, the Western, the January Man, which I, I will confess I've not seen, um, but it, I think it was kind of wasn't it like a spy thriller yes, kind of I a thing? Yes, I believe so. I think yeah. I saw it, and I but I can't remember it right now. Yeah, so I love you to death, which mm-hmm. his his mm-hmm. fun, you know, 
big over the top Italian accent, and he played Tracy Ullman's cheating husband yes. uh, in that Grand Canyon Lawrence Kasdan ensemble thing. A little mm-hmm. weird, a little imbalanced, and Danny Glover was in it. Steve Martin played someone who was actually kind of depressed. So it's just oh, like okay. it's an it was interesting turn yeah. for him. Interesting movie. Um, Consenting Adults, which I think was another kind of. Fatal Attraction esque right. kind of thriller thing um, about cheating. He played Douglas Fairbanks in Chaplin. That was a. I enjoyed that movie. Let me put yeah. it that way. I think the length probably put some people off, and the fact that it was re- it was very, very, very much kind of a documentary style. I mean, it kind of felt it, you were learning a lot yeah. about stars and actors, especially obviously mm-hmm. Charlie Chaplin in the you know teens and twenties and thirties kind of thing, but. He was wondering if anybody's going to do Douglas Fairbanks Jr., it's going to be Kevin Klein. Well, and I when I was coming up with this laundry list, I noticed he plays Douglas Fairbanks in Chaplin. And I, I apologize. Cole Porter. Not Junior. He's playing Douglas Fairbanks, yeah. not the Junior. Sorry. Okay. Douglas Fairbanks in Chaplin. Cole Porter in DeLovely. Mm-hmm. Errol Flynn in The Last Days of If you want to cast someone from old Hollywood who is yes. a charming actor, Kevin Klein is your guy. You know, I, I mean, he's played lots of figures mm-hmm. from old Hollywood uh, in his career. He also did A Midsummer Night's Dream with Michelle Pfeiffer and Callista Flockhart. Do you so remember I, that? I did. Yeah, I saw it. yeah. I saw so it. it was good. Um, no Strings Attached, a little rom com with Aston Kutcher and Natalie Portman. Uh, we're in the lead there. He had a role there. Um, and I just saw this preview. I really want to see this movie. I haven't seen it yet. He plays a grieving widower in this movie called Dean. Hmm. Dean is actually the name of the, the guy who plays his son. And it's kind of a father and son learning learning to lean on each oh, other. Okay. Mom died. So it's a dramedy, okay. um, but it looks kind of quirky and kind of interesting in addition to kind of, you know, obviously some somber material, but mm-hmm. he looks predictably fantastic. Oh yeah. yeah. No, he's, he's great. He's great. And he's aged really, really well. Yeah. He's 70. That is crazy talk to me when, when I couldn't believe that. Yeah. Born in 1947. That. So crazy. he's 70 years old and, and he does not look it. He doesn't act it. He doesn't move that way. And clearly he can take parts that are not always the oldest guy in the room. Yeah. Yeah. And for, well, for some reason in our culture, there's a, there's a distinct difference between 68 and 70, even though it's only two years, it just feels there like is. 70 it, is it, kind it, of a border. It's a major milestone. Um, yeah. So anyway, let's get into to his career. The first block of movies I kind yeah. of put out there, mostly because I knew Stacy wanted to get them out of the way, <laughs> <laughs> was kind of the serious dramatic yeah. actor, yeah. which he can absolutely do. He can do this stuff. Well, in his first movie, he was going up against Meryl Streep. Now, again, I, what I will say is Meryl Streep was not who she is. She wasn't day Meryl Streep yet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. She was building her resume as yes. well. But... She already she had an Oscar. Already had an Oscar and a reputation. Yes. So he was going with her on this Sophie's Choice. Yeah. Now, and he'd done a lot of theater at this point. So he was very well was regarded very much, among actors, mm-hmm. but the world and the nation right. did not know him. They didn't know who yet. he was yet. And here's what I'm going to say. First of all, Sophie's Choice, I do think everyone should see it. Yes. Okay. I, I do. I very much, so much think that everyone should see it. It is an amazing movie. Having said that, I don't know that you're going to want to see it more than once. Especially if you're a parent. I oh my feel gosh. like I feel like I wasn't even a parent when I watched it. And it was one of those where, and I'm done at the end of it as, as the yeah. credits are rolling. But it, it is amazing. It's extremely intense. And I think that he held up against Meryl Streep. Well, and what I found was watching it again. I mean, I, my memories of, of Sophie's Choice, I rewatched it so we could mm-hmm. prepare for this show. And my memory was Meryl, 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 Meryl. And oh, yeah, Kevin Klein played her boyfriend. Watching it again, his he he was probably more Nathan was probably more complicated than Sophie. Sophie had a complicated past. Yes. And how she dealt with her complicated yes. past was was where she was, but the fact that he was so attracted to her. Yes. He had some weirdness going on as well. But he was a complicated character he, just from yes. birth. I mean, he's just Correct. like no matter exactly. what, no matter what circumstance life gave him, he mm-hmm. was going to be difficult and difficult to play. And you get this is not a spoiler because you get the very first scene that he's in um, is this young man played by Peter 
McNichol, who went on to be an Ally McBeal. Um, he is he's he's kind of just moved into this boarding house in Brooklyn, and he gets an invitation from the upstairs neighbors, Nathan and Sophie, to come for dinner. And before that even happens, there's a fight that's taking place mm-hmm. in the stairway, and he goes out, and it's Nathan and Sophie fighting, and he is berating her, and he's so cruel yes. to her. Um, so the very first time you see him, he's manic, mm-hmm. and he's just you know, and he's saying the the most awful things. Storms out, says awful things to to mm-hmm. Peter McNichol on his way out the door, and then storms out. And then the very next time you see him, he's gregarious and warm and lovely, and they're apologizing for his behavior for the night before, and let's all be friends. And then for the first half hour of the movie, it's just about how the three of them become kind of these three musketeers right. friends, right? right? Now, here's what I'm going to say about that, and this goes to Kevin Klein's ability in that here is this this character. That taken at face value, especially from that first scene when they're on the stairwell, Mm -hmm. you don't like him. You hate him because he's being very mean and nasty and you can't even imagine what rationalization. And yet after, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes later, you love him. Yeah. And the the way that Kevin was able to make us fall in love with this very flawed, very complicated, Mm -hmm. very weird. Yeah guy yeah that that and again looked easy looked really easy yeah well it, he's a person who has episodes you know and i'm not gonna i i don't want to d- deliver yeah i don't want to deliver any any spoilers for this one because like you i would really like to encourage yes. people to see it so you find out like what's really going on with him by the time the movie is over but even before you find that out he has these short and there's long durations in between these yes. episodes of intense cruelty and he appears really manic and then in between those times he is the most charming gregarious loving yes lovable supportive wonderful charming. human being charming. absolutely charming and and you're right it takes an incredible actor to pull that off and make both of them seem real and to slide effortlessly mm-hmm. from one into the Correct. other and yeah he's just i mean the fact that 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 she won an Oscar is like, of course, of course, of course she did. She was this, speaking German with a Polish accent. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, not only and does she speak American, yeah. what? I the think hell? she speaks three languages and has to appear to speak them all fluently. Oh my God. You know, throughout the course of this movie. So, so just that the was technical just an skills for Meryl Streep. Yeah, just the technical skills, but also just the depth of character because she's been through so much and mm-hmm. so much is on her face. Mm-hmm. You know, with all of the things that she's going through and the fact that anyway, this is not the Meryl show. She's wonderful, but the fact that he wasn't even nominated. That's what I'm saying because you can see her working. Don't get me wrong. I love her performance in this. I think she was spot on, but. I feel her working. I look at it and I'm going, that's hard. Kevin looks like he's just walked in the room. He's just doing stuff. And as I said, that's, I think, is the con of being able to do something so effortlessly is that you're not going to get recognized. People aren't going to laud you necessarily because they don't get yeah. it. They don't see it. Yeah. And it's only a con if you give a shit about awards, which clearly Correct. we do more than we even want to. Yes. You know, I mean, well, we do we, get hung up on, you know, did they win an Oscar? Did they not? Were they nominated? Isn't that a crime? Blah, blah, blah. In that we are judging the award givers. Yeah. In that there are performances or that, that deserve awards that haven't gotten them. Yeah. But again, it goes back to our award show where it's all kind of. <laughs> <laughs> so the other movie in this bucket of serious well, dramatic what, actor movie. Let me just movie. say, what a great first film. Right? Well done, Kevin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because he's also there are moments where he is very funny mm-hmm. in the midst of so he already is kind of doing yes. this thing. Um, years later, he did another serious dramatic, a very important movie. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, important in, in quotes. scare quotes. Yeah, um, Cry Freedom, which is a lovely movie. I yes. saw it for the first time in preparation for this show. Um, it's really about apartheid in South Africa. Denzel Washington plays Stephen Biko, who is one of the heroes of that, along with Nelson Mandela, of that movement to ensure freedom for black citizens in South Africa. And kind of spoiler, um, Denzel was nominated for Best Supporting Actor in the Oscars for this movie. He dies halfway through the movie. And so the movie is really about him and kind of about his burgeoning friendship with this white journalist in South Africa. And then suddenly, I mean, it kind of felt a little Game of Thronesy, like 
what? It, we're halfway through the right. movie and he died. And then it's the rest of the movie is about Kevin Klein's character writes a book about what really happened to Stephen Biko and his efforts to escape South Africa because the police state kind of takes over right. and they don't want him to leave because they don't want this book to be published right. because it really does speak some real evils as what's going on in that government. So it kind of becomes Kevin Klein's solo movie right. after that is over. And again, a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful mm-hmm. performance. Penelope Wilton, who is best known for me from her turn in Downton Abbey as kind of Maggie Smith's sparring partner, mm-hmm. um, it, and she plays his wife. And she's someone who is always on his side, but not quite as courageous as he right. is. And so it kind of shows she's there to kind of say, here's the cost mm-hmm. of what he's doing and here's how far he's really willing to go. Um, and it's really not until her children are threatened by the South African government that she's like, we're getting the hell out of here. Right. And then it becomes this like, you know, the Von trap family escape kind of a thing because they've got five children without the music without the music there's this is not a musical and all i really have to say about it is he lets denzel shine in that movie he's just you're right you don't see him doing a lot of work you don't see him you know and and denzel really it's it's a powerful performance Mm -hmm. and you really miss him when he when he goes which is the whole point. um yeah and 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 when kevin klein is left to kind of carry the whole thing i had a little problem with okay so we're going to do this whole thing about apartheid and we're going to make the hero white the white guy eh. but it, it was it was when but it, you know whenever it came out yeah, that was it came out untor- before apartheid right, was officially was over years yeah ago, yeah we talked about in a previous episode yeah. that was 25 years yeah. ago but at the time, again, sometimes when movies are made, you have to – looking back on it, you have to put that – take that into consideration. Yeah. And so it was still – that was the thing is it, it was the white people mm-hmm. were the ones who – Kind of carrying it. And yet, and yet Denzel did get some – some right. glory. See what I did there? Oh glory, my gosh. Denzel. Um, the Denzel show, from, although we, we should probably do we'll, We're probably going to do yeah. a Denzel show at some point. Um, when we come back from the break, we're going to lighten up a little bit and talk about some other things that Kevin Klein has done on the lighter end and the darker end and the lighter <laughs> end again, because again, he can do everything. You're listening to Poparation with Eric and Stacy. Take a deep breath. This may sting a little. And we're back. We're talking about Kevin Klein and everything he can do. Yeah. Anything, which is anything. It literally is anything. It is literally anything. And, you know, some of my favorites of his, because that's where I tend to skew, is toward the comedy. Yeah. And we've talked about how he can do, he can do all sorts of comedy. But one of the ones, and this is actually difficult, these two is one is the just crazy off- weird comedy Mm -hmm. okay and then there's also screwball comedy and those are two very different you know they're not realistic yeah maybe that's how to put it it's not realistic necessarily it's a very much an exaggeration people are too clever by half and yeah exactly (laughs) they're they're able to you know those things when you walk away and go i wish i'd said they actually think of them at the yes. time. Um, but one of the ones, and this was hugely lauded for literally everybody who was in it, mm-hmm. A Fish Called Wanda. It, deservedly so. I mean, so this nutty heist movie, it's this, it, there's there's a lot of... Every single character was nuts, except, I don't know if Jamie Lee's was... I don't think as, she was all that crazy. I, she, she, was, crazy. she was the glue. She yeah, was really yeah. the glue that held the whole she movie together. Man. You had to have a straight man yeah. in order for everybody else to, to come off yeah. as nuts as they were. And John Cleese was kind of the straight man, although he was... He's his he, kind of straight man. Yeah. You know what? And, and it's and a John was, Cleese. But he also, he wrote it, and he also, he lost his temper a lot. So he wasn't, so he was, while he was sane, he was doing some funny, he, funny, nutty things. Jamie Lee was really, and she's also the character that kind of had the deepest relationship with all of these yes. nut jobs on the on on the periphery, um, but one of them is her uh, lover, who sometimes masquerades as her brother right. Otto, um, who is the weapons man in this this tale, um, insanely jealous of any man who touches Jamie Lee. And oh, part of so her funny. role is that she has to seduce people in order to get what Correct. she's getting done. She has to seduce George, the lead, the guy who's leading this heist, in order to even get in on the job. She's trying to seduce George's lawyer to find out where George hid the money. Um, You know, she's seducing people in all directions and Otto just can't stand it. What a weird character. You know, and again, 
if this were anybody else, you would see them working so hard uh, to pull this off. But it just seems like Kevin Klein is. Just, if, so when I saw Fatal Attraction for the first time, mm-hmm. I'd never really seen Glenn Close in anything else before that I could recall. She'd done some work really? before, oh, okay. but I just hadn't been a fan and I just okay. hadn't seen those movies. Right. And every time I saw a photo of Glenn Close, I'm like, that bitch is crazy. <laughs> Because that performance in Fatal Attraction has got me so much. If this had been the first time I'd ever seen Kevin Klein, I might have felt the same way. Like, that dude is just a little mm-hmm. off. Because it seemed so real and it seemed so natural. Um, and but- that's the thing. is He made this character who is so outside reality and anybody that you think you could ever know. Mm-hmm. But he seen, he makes it realistic. Yeah. You're like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I see that he could actually function in society you you know what i mean and some of his tics are in the script so the big one is don't call me stupid he doesn't like anyone to insult his intelligence right. or call him stupid. And so it's it's something that, of course, as soon as he says, don't call me stupid, you know that exactly. there's going to be a couple of scenes where people just tell so him off and tell me so we can go nuts. Um, there are others that I wonder if they were him. His whole thing about how he has to smell his armpits to get turned on to have sex. It is the most bizarre thing when he does it. But it's just like, OK, that explains so much well, about I just feel this like narcissist. With this group of actors that there were times when they just kind of let the cameras roll. Yeah. Yeah. And I think John Cleese, again, from Monty Python, as a writer, was used to some of this group writing. Uh And so I don't know that he was going to be insulted or, you know, feel threatened by other people having ideas and throwing it in. So I feel like both him and uh, Michael Palin, Michael Palin probably went on riffs or had these ideas and they said, okay, try it. And they did. And either they worked or they didn't. And if they worked, they stayed in. Mm -hmm. I can totally see that happening. Yeah. I wonder if the script just said Otto speaks Italian to turn Jamie Lee Curtis on and Kevin Klein was able to riff on all that stuff. I think that's very possible. Um, I think he's just so smart. Yeah. And I think that 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 would be totally within the realm of possibility. And by the way, you know, he speaks French fluently and has done done a movie in France. He did a French movie. I saw the French movie. Did you really? I totally saw it and meh. But I saw it (laughs) and I kept watching it because... He's speaking French like everybody else in there. It's like he's French. Yeah. You know, it's not like – and again, I'm I'm not French, so I can't necessarily hear his American accent. Mm-hmm. But – I bet he didn't have one. I, I, I've also seen another movie we're going to talk about later where he speaks French and then he speaks American with a French accent. And it's just like he just fits just in. He's amazing. Out he's just falling out of bed. Amazing. So my favorite movie in this oddball comedian segment. But this is Screwball. I feel like this is Screwball. This is not Kinda, just nutball. Well, but but it's nutty. Um, it is nutty, but it's a screwball comedy. As so I, I agree. I agree. Market. Soap dish, mm-hmm. which was Robert Harling's follow up to Steel Magnolias. Uh, the guy who wrote Steel Magnolias did this movie like next. It's Magnolia. nothing like it, and it's basically it's it's the backstage drama and mm-hmm. antics of a daytime soap opera. Are there daytime soap operas anymore? Like one, there's like really? one left, okay. and then you can see reruns on. I think there's a soap opera network. Okay, so that's the old. They show old ones. Yeah. Like I'm talking like Dark Towers. They show old ones yeah. so you can still watch them in places and, and obviously on youtube you can but, but you know yeah, if you're not day. familiar with the the daytime soap opera it every day for Monday five days Friday. a week mm-hmm. there was an hour's worth of content so the new, writing was new content, new content. Mm-hmm. so the writing was just it all happened i mean they had to write an hour's episode mm-hmm. every day um the actors showed up and had to do five subplot. hours of tv mm-hmm. in a week and it was just put out there so not always in terms of you know quality nope. the best and so nope. the film does like take some time to poke fun at the genre a little bit but mostly it's just the idea that what's happening backstage is way more dramatic than what's happening in the front of the set and so so kevin klein plays this guy named rod randall who years ago was uh he and and sally field's character were a young couple in life and on this soap opera and she very dramatically and for no apparent reason to him had him cut from the show had his character killed and he was sent away 
from the show, and he never knew why. What a way to get dumped, right? So now he's back, and basically... She was like Erica Kane. If you know Erica yes, Kane... Susan Lucci. Uh, all that's my children. The, that is the character that she was based yeah. off of. So now there's a couple... There's a there's an up-and-comer young actress who Kathy Moriarty plays, and she's in cahoots with the producer to get rid of Sally Field. And one of the ways they're going to try to do it is to drive her crazy. And the best way to drive her crazy is to get Kevin Klein back. And so... You know, twenty years later, he's doing he's dinner theater. Back, he's doing that dinner, was a death f- of a salesman that was a funny in scene. dinner theater in South oh Florida. Gosh. And then when he rants about it later, it's one of the funniest scenes oh in the gosh. entire thing. You know, talking about yes. doing death of a salesman with people who were <laughs> spitting out their pits. Um, uh, so, but I was in hell, consigned there by you. I mean, it was just, oh, so great. And uh, the reasons why there's actually, I mean, it's a well written movie. The reasons why, you know, she got him cut. Come right. to light, and so we're not going to give any spoilers. No, it's a very, it's one to watch. So it is funny. one that if you just need something, it, you know, it's a palate cleanser. Mm-hmm. As far as it will, it's it's funny. There is nothing that you're going to learn about anything yeah. except you're going to see some really good actors doing some amazing comedy. Yeah. The one thing I will say about both Soap Dish and A Fish Called Wanda, well, highly recommended. Just know you're watching movies from. 20, 30-ish years ago. They're totally from and their period. Yeah. the homophobia and transphobia in both of these movies is kind of amazing to see we, now. Yes, it's more of a, more politically correct now than it was yeah, at the time. Yeah, so and Otto calls everyone a faggot yeah. to try to, you know, and it and it was funny then, and it's kind of less funny now. And Soap Dish ends with this plot line around a transgender character. Correct. And everyone is universally disgusted by it. So just a little, you know, trigger warning, if you will, about that. Yeah. If you're, you know, if that if that hurts your feelings, just know that that's there. It probably Product of its time. Yeah, it's totally but, a product but, of its time. But Kevin Klein's performance and everybody, Robert Downey everybody Jr., Kathy Moriarty, oh Gary Marshall in the most hysterical cameo he ever had. You will look at these people, though, and go, oh, my gosh, they're so young. I yes. Mean, everybody. Carrie Fisher it's... plays the casting agent. Oh, my God. I forgot about her. Yes. She's, she's so funny. Yeah. No, it's, um, it's a great cast and it's a really fun movie. And I, I certainly. But Kevin Klein did his performance was amazing and it did stand out even amongst that crowd. Yeah, and and he was basically playing the egomaniacal narcissistic actor mm-hmm. who just thinks he can do everything. The cliche of everything that you think an actor yeah. is. Yeah, and when they offer him this role again, the first thing is maybe an accent. You know, and it's <laughs> like, you know, I mean, he's just that kind of guy. Yeah. He's he has a, a visions of doing a one man Hamlet where yeah. he, all the characters are in Hamlet's head. So yeah. you only need one actor. And everyone's like, that sounds like the most, I'm looking yes. at your face right now. Yeah, and it's awful. like, that sounds dreadful. It sounds but awful. that's what a pompous actor would believe. Correct. So it's, he's that guy, but he's so, but again, charming. You can't help, but and love him. Big... And you know, spoiler, not spoiler. Of course, he and Sally Field rekindle their romance as a part of this whole thing. The whole movie leads up Man, to that. No, I don't have to watch oh, it. Oh yeah, you do. Cause how they get there is just <laughs> too funny, but, but, and you want them to. I mean, oh, as, yeah. no, as no, no, awful no. as they both are. And they do deserve each other. Yes, but you want them to. You want to see them, sure. you know, fall into each other's arms but at again, the end of the movie. We get down to what is, you know, one of his biggest strengths, if not the biggest, is his ability to put charm out there, to be charming and for the audience to be charmed by him. Yeah. And whatever, whatever character he's doing. And the first time I saw him was in The Big Chill. And that's the first movie in our next kind of segment, which is kind of his everyman. You know, the Kevin Klein's ability to just, especially in these ensemble movies, just kind of blend in and just be this very everyman kind of very relatable kind of figure. And the big chill was a big the big chill for. I mean, Kevin in certain respects was the, if you will, straight man mm-hmm. of this. In that he didn't seemingly have a big dramatic issue. You know, he was happy. He Mm -hmm. loved his wife. He liked his life. Basically, the big chill is in the sometime in the 80s. I forget it was. And and it's these 30 somethings get together. They all went to college together, Uh but they're getting together because of a funeral of one of their gang from college. Yeah, one of them committed suicide. Do you know who that actor was? Who, Kevin Costner. Yes, yeah. and all his scenes are on the cutting room floor. It's it better been that we didn't see him. It it's was totally better that we better. didn't see him. It was just like Jaws. You don't yeah. want to see... You saw at the beginning, the opening is the... Uh, his funeral. body being dressed for the yeah, funeral. His, yeah, it, what, what Eric said. And... And then everybody goes to the funeral, and so slowly you find out 
all of the characters relationship to the dead guy and, and then also to each other. Yeah. So everyone's grieving a little bit. They've all lost yes. a friend. And so that yes. is kind of what's bringing them together. There's also one girl who is his girlfriend. Yes. Who is just, she's on the outs of everybody. So well, she's, she's kind much of younger. A, she was yes. like 19 years old and everybody else has said is in their mid thirties. Yeah. And so he was dating this night. They're living with this 19 year old. And so she's there also in this mix of these 30 year olds. Yeah. This includes William Hurt. It includes Jeff Goldblum, Jeff Goldblum uh, Glenn Tom Close, Berenger, Tom Berenger, Mary Kay Place, Joe Beth Williams. Yes. And great cast. It was it was an amazing cast. But so they're all dealing with being 35 and, mm-hmm. and they're the first one yep. dying of them. And then also thrown into this weird mix is this 19 year old Meg Tilly who had a whole different perception of Alex. Yeah. Who who's the guy who uh, who, died. who died, and so it, it, you know it's very much a character piece, yep. if you will. But the subplot that that I feel like most people talked about when this was all over, Mary Kay Place, who I love her in this uh, movie, she's and this I love movie. her in general. Like, mm-hmm. why didn't she have more of a career? I don't choices, get that. Choices, choices. She's choices. so great, but in this, she plays a single woman who really she wants a child. That's kind of 80s. where she's it's in the eighties. Yeah. So it, the idea of choosing to be a single mother. Again, hashtag white privilege. Okay, yeah. she has much, she has a good career, yeah. and so financially she can afford mm-hmm. to choose or not to choose yeah. to do this. But she's deciding she wants to do this. Glenn Close is her friend who is very supportive of her, and Glenn Close's character is married to Kevin Klein's right. character. And Glenn has the idea of you know you should visit Mary Kay's bedroom tonight and impregnate her. Well, at first, I mean, <laughs> it, but it, that's it's okay. That's not. I mean, just to go a little bit into this. So Mary Kay plays has the idea that she's looking for a father and she kind of goes through each of the guys Uh to say, will you be the sperm donor for me? And for various and sundry reasons, each of these guys, except Jeff Goldblum, she really wants to, he really wants to. And she's like, no, Uh, they have reasons that they don't want to take on that responsibility. One thing, I don't know, should do spoilers because I don't know if anybody's going to. Glenn Close's character, who is married to Kevin Klein's character, at one point had an affair with the dead guy. Mm -hmm. Now, Kevin Klein's character knows this. And so one thing that precipitates her saying to to Mary Kay Place's character, maybe my husband, Kevin Klein, could do that. Is that there's a guilt. Yeah. She feels guilty for yeah. having done this. Mm-hmm. And again, Kevin Klein's character, as I said, he's kind of – he was a nice guy. Yeah. He forgave her for having this affair, forgave Alex to an, you know, to an extent he forgave them. And so I remember you know, when she says, I want to talk to you, and, and he's like, what do you want to talk about? And then they close the door, and you don't know how she phrased it. You don't yeah. know what the conversation really was. But she was basically saying – I'm okay if you impregnate a good friend of mine. Yep. And, and but then the scene where Kevin Klein goes to Mary Kay Place's correct. room and and they begin by kissing each other. I mean, it's yes. not like you know. I mean, and and they're gonna. This is gonna Clearly happen the old fashioned way. They're not yes. gonna go to a clinic. No. You know. No. And then the next morning, they're all fine. Yep. You know, and that's the thing is that you kind of are like, okay, well, what's 80s. what's going to be the moral of this? Is that are we going to all be so weird at the end? It's going to tear friendships apart. Nope. 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 Not at all. It was just a little bit of impregnation between friends. Yep. Yeah. It was, um, but it's also one very much of its time. Yes. It's very much, you have to put it in that time period. There's no internet. There's no cell phones. People aren't using really computers for much. And it's just very, very much. But it's 80s. a great movie, and I love those ensemble movies. I love getting a whole bunch of really great actors together, and I and I like those kind of event based, and all the characters have a different point of view. I feel I like, like these movies a lot. That the Big Chill is what, and I don't know which came first, but I think it was the Big Chill started. Remember this TV show called Thirty Something? Uh huh. I feel like that's what prompted it probably because that was what that was i hated that show by the way if we ever get to that sort of thing i will tell you again i hated 30 something i was 20 something at the time mm. and whiny 30 year olds bored me to tears but i still liked <laughs> the big chill because it wasn't whiny no it was a whole different game they were but just kevin, well they were sad but they had a good reason to be sad so but they died. were real they were all real yeah. and kevin klein was just again it was effortless yeah so the next two movies on our everyman category are ones that you have not seen. I have not seen them. You will not see. They're just no. not going to be, you know. One is The Ice Storm, mm-hmm. which was an Ang Lee movie. Oh, okay. Ang Lee is a fantastic filmmaker. Sense and Sensibility is one of my very, very yes. favorites. Yes, yes. Um, 
the the ice storm was, I believe, based on a novel, and it takes place in Connecticut in the 1970s, very period. Christina Ricci, I will say, is hysterical. You should YouTube the dinner scene, if nothing else. Okay, Christina Ricci she, is very, I like her a lot. When she says grace, she says grace in a very overly, overtly political way, and Kevin Klein's just rolling his eyes. So Kevin Klein plays her father, and Joan Allen plays the mom in that family. Kevin Klein is having an affair with Sigourney Weaver, who lives next door. Um, and so he's a cheating husband. But again, because it's Kevin Klein, you you don't hate him. him. You don't really forgive him. He's uh, doing a horrible thing. But the other thing is he knows he's doing a horrible thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, the guilt is all over his face. Mm-hmm. And there's no – like his his affair with Sigourney is not passionate. You know, basically, as soon as oh, okay. they're done, Sigourney's like, you can leave now. I mean, it's one of those kinds gotcha. of things. You know, she's using him. Mm-hmm. And he's kind of using her in an extent because he kind of, you know, it's just a it, – it's really all about kind of moral depravity in the suburbs in the 70s and okay. kind of how we all went through this. I, I think the, the metaphor is that the country went through an ice storm, if you will, where we all kind of turned our feelings off for a little while. Okay. Okay. Um, but there is actually an ice storm that's happening. And so not only is it the parents, mm-hmm. but also the kids. And the big kind of impetus of this movie is a key party that takes yep. place in the midst of it where if you're not familiar with the term key party this it's goes what back to the 60s and 70s swinging swingers. you know swingers did mm-hmm. in the 60s and 70s is you'd show up and every couple would put their car keys into a bowl mm-hmm. and then as they left the women would take car keys out of the bowl and whoever that car belonged to the man would take her home and they yep. would all swing a little bit joan allen doesn't want to do this Kevin Klein kind of does. Mm-hmm. And so it's just that's another thing. But it's also about the impact on their kids. And the kids, Elijah Wood, Toby Maguire, Christina Ricci. Wow. I mean, really good cast of, you know, uh, of what of what's happening in the younger generation as well. And there's there's a quasi tragic ending. It's tragic, but it's you don't it's not filmed in such a way where you get the big over the top right. crying scene. It's just it's not it's not that kind of movie. It's okay. it's, it's meant to leave you <laughs> A little cold. Ah, see what I did? I see what you did there. Um, anyway, interesting film, and Kevin mm-hmm. Klein is predictably fantastic right. in it. The other one that I just have to talk about. Okay, so I went on Facebook, and in preparation for the show, I asked all of my friends, what's your favorite Kevin Klein performance? Because mm-hmm. I wanted to do some homework. Sure. And I wanted to see. Two friends of mine said, oh, you've got to see Life as a House. It's Life it. as a House. Sorry. Yeah. It, it, it's their favorite, favorite, favorite. So I watched the preview, mm-hmm. right? And the preview shows Kevin Klein, and he's and he's very much at the center of this because oftentimes he does really well in these supporting roles because he doesn't call a lot of attention Correct. to himself. But he is the center of this movie. And you see this man who is uh, divorced. Kristen Scott Thomas plays his ex-wife, oh, and her. she can't stand him. Awesome. Hayden Christensen plays his son, and yeah. he's actually good in this is one. He this good is like for him? you know, yeah, this time. is a this is a good role for him. He's very disturbed. Mom can't really deal with him. Mm-hmm. He is an architect who just got fired from his job. So life is not going great for Kevin. He has no wife. He has no right. relationship with his child. He doesn't have a job, and he decides he's going to tear down this horrible shack that he lives in and build his dream house on that spot and he wants his son to live with him for the summer and basically through a little bit of tough love Mm -hmm. they're going to rebuild their relationship and in the preview you see him slow dancing with his ex-wife at one point and you kind of get this idea of okay starts off really down on his luck but he's going to build a dream house Mm -hmm. he's going to get back together with his Mm ex-wife he's going to build a relationship with his son you don't know what's going to happen with him in terms of employment but it looks like life 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 back while he builds the house is it life as a house see that's the title very clever what the the preview neglects to tell you (laughs) is that while all this is going on he has stage four terminal cancer nope will not be seeing it that's a big fucking plot hole to leave out so he's dying the entire time and tells no one so that's looming over this entire film is that occasionally when he gets a little tired at the end of the day. Okay, first of all, someone with stage four cancer cannot build a goddamn house. No, okay, they can can't. we just start they really there? Can't. And, you know, so I was so, like, but 15 minutes into this movie, and this is not a spoiler because 15 minutes into the movie, he gets this diagnosis and it looms over the whole movie. Of course, you couldn't put that in the preview because nobody would want to go see it. Correct. And maybe that was a good it was call. Okay. Oh my God. I mean, all the love in the world to Kyle and, and, and Ryan who who love this film and it's very dear to their mm-hmm. hearts. But you know, of course, you know, what do you suppose happens at the end? I'm gonna say the dog dies. <laughs> 
Oh my god. It just yeah. No, Life is a really terminal, fucking depressing house. If you look up the word terminal. Yeah. That that's that pretty tells much you yeah. everything. So so no the, I will the not, cure for pass. cancer. The cure for cancer is not Didn't discovered happen. in this movie. Uh minor spoiler. Um, but Kevin was Yeah, but Kevin was saying. great. I mean the thing is is if you're if, if anyone's gonna hold this this thing together, <laughs> honestly, if anyone is going to hold this thing together. Mm-hmm. How can you not love him? You know, and so basically he just wants to be loved. He wants his wife to love him again. He wants his son to realize that he's an okay guy. Before he dies. Before he dies. And he's, by the way, he's not telling any of these people. Sure, why would you do that? That he's, yeah. Why would you do that? So when they discover, it's an, oh my God. It, uh, okay. Uh, we're going to take a break. I need a break, Stacy. We're going to come back and we're going to talk about a couple of uh, we're going to revisit the lighter side and then uh, then we're going to play a little game. That's going to be fun. Open wide. It's your prescribed dose of operation with Eric and Stacy. And we're back. And we're talking about Kevin Klein. I love Kevin Klein. Brilliant. And here's so I rewatched this movie with my daughters. They had never seen it. We had talked earlier about his ability with languages uh-huh. and how French in particular. French, I don't know. I don't know how many languages. Yeah, he I don't speaks, know either, but, but I do know he speaks French fluently. Fluently. And I'm going to even go like a native because in French Kiss. It was he and Meg Ryan, and it's a romantic comedy, mm-hmm. which he did, does very, very well yep. because of that likability, that charm. And in French Kiss, he is a Frenchman mm-hmm. who, Luke. 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 Uh, who, will, <laughs> who's, who speaks uh, English to Meg. Obviously, she doesn't she doesn't understand French, but then he is also speaking French, too, because they're in France. Mm-hmm. So. He speaks like Jean Reno is in it, who I love yeah. him, and but he's French French, mm-hmm. and I, Kevin sounds just like him. Yeah, I mean it's it's absolutely amazing. But this is one of my favorite favorite romantic comedies, just in general. Mm-hmm. The characters are fabulous, and watching it again because it's been it's probably been at least a decade or two uh-huh. since I've seen it. it it's still delightful. It holds up. Again, it's of its time. There is no internet. There is no. There aren't any cell phones. Yeah. But it is just. It's written well. The characters are lovely. Meg Ryan was still cute. Yeah, and Meg Ryan plays a very Meg Ryan character. Oh, it's it's in totally this. Meg Ryan. You yeah. have to like Meg Ryan. If you don't like Meg Ryan, you probably won't no. want to do the movie because and her she's, kind of insecure, neurotic yes. kind of you know, right. but but adorable. Absolutely but adorable. adorable. Yeah. And she and Kevin were lovely together. Mm-hmm. I really, really enjoyed that. But I also liked him and his relationship with John Renault. Kevin was a thief of sorts, and John Renault was a, the a petty criminal friend. everyone loves. Correct. And they were just friends from way back. Mm-hmm. But John Renault is now a cop. Yeah. And so there's that. And, and it's, uh, there's, you know, about a vineyard. She has. Fear of flying, but she has to fly mm-hmm. from Canada to, and Paris. that was a weird one. That was a weird one in that she was an American, and of course, it's not weird now, but back in the day, it was like, why would you want to become a Canadian citizen? Why would you want to leave your American citizenship and become a Canadian? I get it now. Yeah. But I didn't at the time. Well, just because who was the guy who played her horrible Timothy Hutton? Fiance, Timothy Hutton. Yeah. Who I really like. He's but wonderful. you know, but he but he also can play an arrogant son of a bitch he really does. well. And he did really well. Um you know, I, I just thought she wanted him and he's Canadian. And that's so very possibly that's, true. That's, that's all I really got that's from that. That's very possibly true. But it, it, it was it, that was just a kind of a funny little subplot. But about Kevin, one of the things in the movie that I just recall is he looks kind of. I mean, they they didn't really they they played into some stereotypes of French people a little oh, bit. He smokes all the time, and they made he smokes all the time, and he looks kind of greasy. Yep. Yep, yep, you yep, know, yep. he's kind of got this. He's got the mustache, but then his beard's kind of halfway grown and he's scruffy. Yeah, no, he's got long hair that mm-hmm. kind of you know creeps down his shirt collar a little bit, and so it looks, looks like he's got is very a lot of pomade mm-hmm. that was in there, and it just looks a little greasy. And yet, you don't God, care. I'd do him. You don't oh care. my God, he's adorable. Yeah, just yeah, and adorable and, and hot, which are two completely different things, correct. and he's both of them at the same time, and heart of gold. Yes. Because he does have a moral compass and he's not – and you realize, you learn why he's a thief uh, at one point. And, and I totally – I don't want to 
blow anything here, so I want people to see it. Yes. So I'm not going to do any spoilers. Now, it's funny. Some of our Facebook friends have said a few things about French Kiss, about how, you know, uh, not their favorite necessarily, because it, it is a little far-fetched. If you're going... Of course it yeah, is. It's, it's a, a romantic, rom-com. It's a rom-com. It's a rom-com. And it's, it's, a, it's a good old-fashioned rom-com in that it exactly. is extremely far-fetched. Of course it is. But if you're looking for a little escapism and a little romance, it's a perfectly it charming is, it film. Is and again, fun. as we've said, this is like such a running theme of our show. Um, and you've kind of introduced this concept to me. And the more I think about it, the more I think it's absolutely true. You know, sometimes half the job is casting the right actor oh. because, you know, if anyone, like I imagine Bruce Willis trying to play nope. Luke and nope. hard pass, you nope. know, and he nope. can be very charming mm-hmm. and he can be in his own way, you but know, you'd have to, there's something about this guy is not anyone you'd want to bring home well, to mom somebody, unless it's Kevin Klein. But here's what I want to say. Here's another person. You, you said Bruce Willis. Yeah, but that, this is not, even though he did moonlighting, mm-hmm. this is not a him. This would be closer if you say maybe Jude Law. Okay, but even so. But I don't so, think he works. Ew. That's what I'm saying. I don't think he works. Yeah. Kevin Klein works. Because Luke is, he's already a little creepy. I mean, on paper, he's creepy. Yes. And that's why you need Kevin Klein to yes. completely elevate him out of that. You know, I because agree. all romantic comedies, these couples don't look good on paper. Otherwise, there's no movie. Correct. And so one of the ways – and so, you know, Meg's got her neuroses. She's Mm -hmm. got her fear of flying and she can be a little – you know, uh, she can have unrealistic notions. But that's it. He's a petty criminal, Mm -hmm. you know? (laughs) And there are bigger issues with the – you know, they do not look good on paper as a couple. And so you need a Kevin Klein. To yes. make it even palatable, need, and it's it's more than palatable. It's charming yeah, and it's lovely. You need that charm. That's yeah. exactly the word I was going to use. So that's as I said. I get that it's not everybody's favorite. I totally. But in the rom com world, mm-hmm. in my opinion, it's one yeah. of the best. And I also the very end, the last kiss they have, one of my favorite screen kisses of all time. And it's, it's very because real. Kevin Klein, it's it's how he holds his hands. That sounds weird. You're going to have to watch the movie to find out <laughs> what I mean by that. But report back to it us. is amazing. It's 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 one of my favorite uh, screen kisses of all time. I feel like it's it's passionate. But that's yeah. on Kevin. Yeah. So the next one on this list, I watched for the first time last night. Oh yeah. In prep for this I movie, and the that theater. is Dave. Yep. Which Kevin mm-hmm. plays both the horrible, horrible president as well as mm-hmm. the guy with the heart of gold who just happens to be the president's double, his Correct. doppelganger. Exactly. And so the Secret Service, uh, so that the president can bang his secretary, who's a very young Laura Linney in this movie, they hire him to basically walk from a hotel where the president just gave a speech into a limo, divert the press into mm-hmm. thinking the president's out of the building so he can stay in the hotel and bang his secretary. In the midst of banging his secretary, he has a stroke that turns him into a vegetable. And because the horrible, horrible chief of staff, played by Frank Langella, wants to retain power and not cede the country to the vice president, decides to bring the doppelganger back and basically have him pose as the president. Right. Um, Lots of political machinations. And and I put this in the rom-com file because of his relationship with Sigourney Weaver. Sigourney Weaver plays the first lady Mm -hmm. who has not spoken to her husband Mm -hmm. in centuries, it seems like. Because he was not a, he's not a good person. He's not a good person. And and without ever saying so, he's a Republican. They've pretty much painted that he's very socially conservative, mm-hmm. whereas Sigourney is very socially liberal and her pet cause is the homeless. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, Dave, this guy who's filling in for the president, he really wants to help the homeless. Like, why not? Sure. You know, because anybody would. And she starts to – she's the one person who is not fooled by this. Correct. You know, I was going to say, um, yeah. and, and she sees through him pretty quickly that this is not – my horrible, awful husband. This is a good right. guy. Who the hell are you? And the two of them do form a friendship. They have to. Yeah, they it's a out, friendship. Yeah. You know, for most of the movie, mm-hmm. it doesn't really. A spoiler. It doesn't really become a. You know romance until right. very, very close to the end of the film. But it's so satisfying when it does. Mm-hmm. And you could put this in the same category as something like The American President. It does have a few things to say about what there, – there's a lovely speech that he gives about what public service right. should be. Mm-hmm. And this is kind of like this is what I've learned from impersonating the president right. for a couple of months. And and there are like, you know, boy, would I like some people in Washington to sit down and watch this movie just to kind of hear that yeah. little speech. You know, I think yeah. we could all learn a little something yeah. from that. There's but speeches, but, but it's in the rom-com genre because of that. Because it's really about how he – and he's painted as somebody who 
you know, his secretary, his his real life secretary, not the one that mm-hmm. his banging, um, Faith Prince has a little role as his uh, secretary back at the temp agency that he runs okay. in his real life. And when she uh, when he calls her to say, I've met a girl, we're escaping to Tahiti for a month, I'll be back soon. That's his alibi to like, you know, be away from the office. She says, oh, he fell in love. Thank God. And so that that little moment mm-hmm. just kind of tells you this is a person who's been lonely for a really long time. And so you're also yearning for that on his behalf. Um, I feel like this was very much a modernized, modernized for its time, 20 years ago, whenever it was, uh, mm-hmm. it was a modernized version of Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Yeah. Which was very much about learning what is Washington about and then on the side, there was this romance. Mm-hmm. So I feel like it's as much a romantic comedy as Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, which is back in the 30s, yeah. 40s. And they actually remade it several times, but the original is, is very good. And I think that, yes, I do think it is a romantic comedy, but there is also this this fish out of water thing. Mm-hmm. And this, you know, Dave is the audience, He's coming into this going, wait, what is going on here? Whereas we're learning about all these back room yep. things going on. And and I think it's, it's very different now because now in 2017, a lot of that stuff is on social media. Yeah. But at the time, there was no place to see it mm-hmm. unless there was, you know, somebody yeah. who had a contact yeah. named Deep Throat. So but it's but I think that that's that's how I view this movie as the newer version of Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Yeah. yeah, and he experiences all this stuff, and we watch his face, and, and we're right we with are, him. Yeah. We, are, we are he Absolutely. as he goes Absolutely. through these experiences. So he does the same kind of thing in the in the, next, in the, the final movie on our list, which is in and out uh, which is interesting because we're actually, for the first time, I think, in probably a modern movie, asked to be the audience as well as he's playing a gay man. Right. You know, and so this movie was was written by Paul Rudnick. Um, who is a a humorist, essayist, activist, playwright. If I recall, it was kind of controversial when it came out. It was. It was. Just because, oh my God, it's a gay love story. Exactly. I mean, that was just with Kevin Klein. I mean, it's so mainstream. To make it that way is you needed a big name because Kevin was a big name at the time. And so in some ways, it was was courageous. And I'm using that, you know, it was courageous of Kevin to do this. But... I, I thought I, I saw it and I thought it was great. I yeah, it it's was, charming. I mean, it it's is. like everything. Yes. The word we have to do a word count on how often we use the word charming in this, this particular it episode. <laughs> it was bad. This, this episode was bad. Um, but you know, but but it but that's what it is. Is that you can't help but love this guy, and he's and in the closet. The point. But he's, that was part of the but point. But he's in the closet even to himself mm-hmm. at the beginning, which is where the everyman thing works, mm-hmm. right? Is that you just really so so you're watching this movie. Um, he's a teacher. His one one of his students. Um, is winning an Oscar and so they're all watching the Oscars and this this guy wins the Oscar and thanks his English teacher who was Kevin Klein mm-hmm. and says you know you were really a role model for me as a gay man and the whole town goes what and he <laughs> and even Kevin Klein <laughs> says like, what? what it's just this like but I'm not but then <sighs> Yeah. Like as the idea kind of percolates, mm-hmm. he realizes like maybe he and his student saw something in him that he right. didn't see, but it eventually starts to surface. And Tom Selleck plays an out gay man. Now that was some also some interesting casting. And really, really weird. That's yeah. really weird considering Tom Selleck and who he is. Yeah. But, you know, here we got Magnum P.I., mm-hmm. Sans Mustache, mm-hmm. playing a reporter, I believe, who is an out gay man who who also believes that Kevin right. Klein is gay. And so as the movie progresses, he eventually comes out to himself and then the world, including his fiance, who's Joan Cusack, who right. got an Oscar nomination, hysterically funny. She's wonderful. She was so great. underrated Joan Cusack. Yeah. But, you know, but she uh, she's dealing with this, as is he. But basically what this movie does is it takes the audience on this journey of here's what it's like to realize you're gay and here's what it's like when the rest of the world kind of sees you in that way. And in that way, it was kind of a revolutionary film in this very mm-hmm. mainstream, easy to take, yes. easy to watch package. Yes. Um, so great. Yeah. Highly recommended. The last thing we want to talk about before we get play our little game. Uh, and then get to final diagnosis is that Kevin Klein did recently win a Tony Award. And as we said, he had been stage first. Yes. He's so done a lot of theater. He, he goes back and forth from that. And, and I think that shows. And I think some of that effortlessness that yeah. we talk about, that's that. Because you really have to work hard yeah. when you're doing uh, stage yeah. performances. But 
Okay, I saw this play. It yeah, was I saw Noel what? Coward's Present Laughter. Mm-hmm. And I saw this on stage in New York. I, I believe it was in previews, so I hadn't even seen a, a review or anything. But my work colleague and I were headed to New York. She really wanted to see a Broadway show. We had some options, but I said, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, there are tickets available for Kevin Klein. Let's go. And she was like, okay, like she didn't, we're fine. Right. And Again, what I was really struck by in that audience is looking down on the stage. We were up in the mezzanine watching this thing. And I just thought to myself, no one in this room knows how hard he is working. Mm -hmm. No one has Mm -hmm. any idea because he was carrying this Noel Coward piece where he Mm -hmm. plays another kind of full of himself actor. Noel Coward scripts are difficult for actors. They're difficult to play. So many words. Yes. And so many nuances, so much timing. And then you have your characters on top of that. Yep. It's very difficult. But the one moment that I just kind of noticed is he's standing in front of or behind this chaise lounge and he just is tired and something happens and it's kind of instead of rolling his eyes, he just flips over the back of the chaise lounge and just falls and flumps onto this thing. And he just, it was the most, again, effortless thing Mm -hmm. I'd ever seen in my entire life. And he just played the whole thing that way. And I I talked to a lot of people after that show who said, yeah, he was okay. Like, he was good. You know, and I'm like, oh, you have no idea. You just have no, and I don't want to sound like a snob about it. But if you've never been on a stage and had to carry something like that and say those many words mm-hmm. and do that and, and the kind of five door farcical nature of the way parts of this right. show worked out and be this person who is billed as very seductive, mm-hmm. very charming, very all those things that Kevin Klein just is. I mean, the, the casting could not have been more perfect. And I'm so happy that the people who vote for the Tony Awards right. clearly know how difficult that that is and how much work actually went into it. So, and and that's what, as I said, when you are that good and you're effortless and it, and and it looks, you make it look easy Mm -hmm. because Fred Astaire was like this as well. People sit there and law Gene Kelly, Fred Astaire was amazing, but he, he never looks like he's working and that's Kevin Klein never looks like he's working. He just looks like he's having fun. And that's another thing is that audiences like it. When you look like you're having fun up there, they enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. And Kevin always looks like he's having a good time. Yeah. And even when this character was going through, you know, things that were – this was not a – I mean, this is a, a very much comedy. He never was, you know, dealing with life or death kind right. of issues. But he was mildly annoyed a lot. Mm. And even when he was annoyed, he was – you know, he had the joie de vivre about him that just carried you right along. And it was a delightful evening Excellent. in the theater. And I was so happy when he won. So, so happy. Excellent. So before we get to our final diagnosis, Stacey, mm-hmm. you came up with this little game that you wanted us to play. So so what are the rules of this well, game? They, Give it to us. I don't know if there's rules. But here's the thing. I'm sitting here thinking of, and looking at these different movies that Kevin Klein has done. And I guess if we said we run the gamut from drama, 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 to screwball, to rom-com, to just your regular everyman. He can do it all. But he hasn't – I mean he hasn't done everything. He hasn't done every movie, obviously, because there are lots of other actors out there. And I was wondering if there were a movie, a uh, character in a movie that he, that he didn't play, uh-huh. that you think that he could have played as well as the, the one who did play it mm-hmm. or better. Okay. And that's my question, is that is okay. there a role that Kevin Klein should have done? So mine is definitely in the realm of could be as good as because I thought okay. this guy was brilliant. Okay. Um, but if and I wouldn't replace this actor with with most people, but okay. I think Kevin Klein could do this. And this was a, a movie that was made in '69, mm-hmm. and he was far too young in 1969 to well, play that's, this. No, it's not about what it's it's yeah. in. But in, but it, okay. but if this movie were remade, mm-hmm. he could absolutely play King Henry the Second in The Lion in Winter. Peter O'Toole did that. Yes. Opposite That's Catherine Hepburn. That's a great movie. <laughs> now, the reason I say that is because you've got to be funny. Well, and I was thinking that he could he could play uh, Peter O'Toole in a biography about Peter O'Toole. He could. He oh, he Just so could. He Just so could. Well, in addition to his Errol Flynn, his Cole yes, Porter, exactly. and his Douglas Fairbanks. Just, you know, just kind of do the Why trifecta. Not? Why don't you just play everyone in old Hollywood? But in The Lion in Winter, you've got to be funny. Because it's a dark comedy, mm-hmm. and it, but it's a dark mm-hmm. verbal comedy. I mean, verbal. it's all it's it's it based is. on a play. It, you can feel mm-hmm. that when you watch it because mm-hmm. it's all in the dialogue. The Queen, which Catherine Hepburn played mm-hmm. the Queen, avenge, every once in a while, 
very rarely she shows the cracks in her armor. And you see that underneath this caustic, acerbic, brittle woman is someone who really just loves her husband. And, you know, there's this is a love story. But what Peter O'Toole has. King Henry never does that. He never does it in the entire movie. He never says, but I really just love you. No, he like, never he says He never it. breaks down that way. But if you don't believe that these two people are desperately in love with each other, it doesn't work. But, and so it depends on the actor. Yes. And and Peter O'Toole, there are some moments on his face that yes, you see. Yes, absolutely. That you do see that. Yeah. He never says it out loud, but you can see it. But here's the thing. Peter O'Toole had that thing that Kevin Klein has, and that's that charm. Yeah. He has that likability, even mm-hmm. though he can be a bastard in whatever character he's yeah. in. There's still something that you root for him. By the way, if you don't know anything about the line in winter, King Henry kept his wife, Eleanor of Aquitaine, jailed in a tower jailed. She was a prisoner and only let her out for court occasions where they had to be seen in public. And this is one of those pieces. For a Christmas court, yep. he brings her out of jail. Yep. And in fact, her first words to him are, how dear of you to let me out of jail. Mm. And he says, it's just for the holidays. Yeah. You know, and this is how they relate to each other. I mean, they're awful to each yeah, other. They, yeah, they but really if are. you don't believe that they're in love with each other, the whole thing yep. falls apart. And, and therefore, it's such a lift for an actor who needs to have all the dramatic stuff. You need to be able to read things mm-hmm. on their faces. He has to be charming because he's an awful person, but you have to like him. I agree. I think and, Kevin and could that, totally do it. He could do it. He, he could, could totally absolutely do, do that. Yeah. Now, there was a remake. Glenn Close and Patrick Stewart no. did a remake for mm-hmm. TV. Mm-hmm. It didn't work for me. Mm-hmm. It didn't work for I me. It, I, it, yeah, I, I would I would I'm, recommend. I love both of those actors, but no. if you're going to watch A Lion and no. Winner, I would say go back watch to the, the Peter original, O'Toole, yes. Catherine Hepburn version. Yes, for sure. I'm not against remakes as a rule. If they no, can be done work. well, Kevin Klein could do it. Yeah. What was yours? So on this one, this the actor who portrays this is very good. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. He's wonderful. He's also a chameleon. Uh huh. But I do think when I was thinking about what could Kevin, what character, what Captain Jack Sparrow from Pirates of the Caribbean. Pirates of the Caribbean. Yes. Yes. He could totally do that. Yeah, would it be a little different from Johnny Depp's version? Of course it would because yep. they're different actors. Yep. But he could totally, again, not Kevin now. Would be a little he's, less he's, gay. he's too old. He maybe I don't know. I but I can see him because Kevin can do that light kind of feather light kind of thing. Yes, and it doesn't read as as swishy. It would probably be a little lighter, and I think that's a good word for it. Yeah. It wouldn't be as dark. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Johnny's very dark, yeah. and and he, but he's still got that wit because Johnny has a lot of he he's charming on screen yes, as well. Very. But it's one of those characters I don't know that I would necessarily replace. I'm saying that when Kevin was in his prime, a little younger, mm-hmm. and if that had come up, that would have been a part that I, I could have cast him You know him what? In. I mean, there's nothing in the movies that I recall that says he has to be young. Kevin probably could have played that. No, that would true. have been a different choice. That's it would true. have been a different and choice it, and, and a different kind of thing. And that's my only thing. I'm not saying he would have been better. I'm saying that it would have been a very yeah, – it would have been different, have, but he totally could have nailed it. Totally okay. could have nailed it. I like Johnny Depp, and I like Johnny mm-hmm. Depp in those movies. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go out on a limb and say I think he would be better. Wow. I think I think Kevin Klein would have been better in it's those movies. That's yeah, I'm, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to I'm going to bring on the hate mail, but I think he would have been better. I think he, you know, when when Johnny Depp did it, there was kind of this reaction of is he playing it gay? I mean, is he trying to be gay because again, you see Johnny Depp working a little bit more than you would see Kevin Klein working. Okay, there is that. And and is this kind of a statement that they're making about sexuality? I don't think that would necessarily be there nearly as strongly with Kevin Klein. And I think that his his age might have actually given Captain Jack a little bit more gravitas. You would believe that he was the captain of a pirate ship. I will tell you right now, I didn't realize, and maybe this is a discussion for a Pirates of the Caribbean, I, I didn't... Jack, the Jack Sparrow gay thing didn't hit me like it's clearly hit you. Oh, it, it, was, it was a whole topic going my whole community okay, see, when it not, came out. Is so that, I'm like, is, really? Is, did they like actually make a Disney movie with a gay hero? I, I mean, did. yeah, there was a whole conversation. See, I didn't. I, that's not Johnny's what I got. Pretty swishy. He's he is pretty but swishy. I but I didn't. I wasn't attributing it to his sexuality. Yeah, he farts rainbows throughout that whole movie. That's very funny yeah. to me. Okay, yeah. well, well, look at me learning something. <laughs> Final diagnosis, Kevin Klein's awesome. Uh, he can do anything. And and there is this, you know, I, 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 again, I don't think there's anything in this particular final diagnosis that we haven't said before. But being able to do the amount of work that he can do and never let you catch him working mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. an instant 
you got to be born with that. I don't, I mean, can you teach that? I don't no, know. No, I don't think you can. It, I, I really don't think, think you can. I think he's just one of these once in a lifetime performers mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that again, just brings me back to something we said at the very beginning, this whole awards structure, you know, whatever. I, Kevin Klein is, mm-hmm. I, I, again, I'm going to go out on a limb. I, I, I defy anyone to, to, you can't really compare actors. That's another thing that yeah. awards are, mm-hmm. are tough with. Nobody's better. Nobody is better than Kevin Klein. No, I agree on that. And I think that it's well worth, if you haven't watched uh, much of his stuff, go look to, to go to IMDb, look at what he's done, and pick a few and, and, and watch you know, them because they're fun. For the, prepping for this, this particular episode, I watched a lot of Kevin Klein movies mm-hmm. in the past two weeks. And watching them all back to back, I'm just stunned by his range. I mean, yes. Ab- I mean, I, exactly. I have much more respect for him even than when we decided we were going to Well, what do it does is it makes it easy because it, you're not feeling like you're watching the same character over and over and over again. Exactly. You watch, I mean, you watch three John Waynes in a row, you're kind of done. <laughs> you're kind of done. Good point. Good point. Uh, but whereas Kevin Klein, it's so different, you can keep going on yeah. and on and on. Yeah. So uh, that's that's my final diagnosis is I think it's he's well worth looking into his filmography and yeah. checking some of them out. Great. Till the next time, this is Poperation. I'm Eric. I'm Stacy, and check out our website, www.poperationroom.com. You've been listening to Poperation with Eric and Stacy. Check out our website at poperationroom.com for links to our blog and other extras. Don't forget to subscribe to Poperation via iTunes, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, and other podcast locations. You can also follow at Poperation Room on Facebook and Twitter. Music provided by purpleplanet.com.